Hi everyone, this is Trevor from astrobackyard.com and if you're new to this channel, I take pictures of deep sky objects uh, with my camera and telescope here in the backyard. Tonight is Monday, August 14th. The summer nights of astronomy are short and sweet. In the middle of summer, it's easy to take these pleasant nights for granted and to focus on the late sunsets and the mosquitoes. It was suggested that I rename the channel Astro Garage since I spent so much time in here. But when I say the backyard, I mean my personal outdoor space at home. Uh, I'm right in the middle of town, but at the same time I have a window to the universe. And uh, it's pretty incredible. Join me so I can share these images with you. Or get your own gear together and start doing it with me. Tonight's target is known as the Veil Nebula, the Western Veil Nebula to be exact, NGC 6960, the Witch's Broom, the Finger of God. I approve of these epic titles. From my latitude, NGC 6960 rises high into the sky in the constellation Cygnus this time of year. The Veil Nebula is a supernova remnant of an exploded star. To photograph the veil, I'm gonna be using an Altair Hypercam 183C one-shot color astronomy camera. This camera is an upgrade from my DSLR due to the internal fan cooling that keeps the sensor much cooler on a night like this in the summer, which means less noise. Despite the claims of this camera being great for short exposure imaging, I prefer to shoot long guided exposures of at least three minutes or more. And this has been successful for me with both broadband RGB imaging and narrowband shooting with my HA, O3, and S2 filters. The sun is starting to set now, so I'm gonna go uh, get set up and get polar aligned. If you've been following along with my website, you'll know that uh, I've been using some narrowband filters for some narrowband astrophotography, particularly of the uh, H-alpha and oxygen-3 wavelengths. So this Veil Nebula is an ongoing project, and uh, the last missing piece of it uh, is to capture some well-framed RGB broadband data using the Altair Hypercam 183C. The problem I had before was that uh, I didn't actually own any light pollution or UHC filters with the Altair Hypercam, so any RGB data was horribly, uh, there's horrible gradients due to light pollution in, in the city here. So because of that, Ontario Telescope and Accessories has given me some UHC filters to try out. And this one that I'm going to be trying out tonight is the Bader UHC-S filter. Now, the, the specs on the case here sound exactly like my situation. It says, block city light for observing and imaging emission objects, ultra high contrast L filter for city bound RGB imaging. So that sounds about right to me. So here's the field flattener here, the Altair Light Wave. 
08, uh, 0.08 reducer flattener. And uh, because this is a two inch filter, I'm gonna be threading it on here. And capturing some three minute subs with this filter in the camera uh, using astrophotography tool. So I'm just here in the garage now with uh, running astrophotography tool via team viewer on my imaging laptop. I'm literally about 15 steps away. Uh, it's just a little quieter in here and uh, I'm able to record the screen view for the video here. So I've got my target framed up. The Veil Nebula is uh, in here and I know from the central star I've got that exactly where I want it. Uh, I've, I've actually learned the star pattern around this object quite well from shooting the narrowband images over the last few weeks. So I'm hoping to get some good RGB data tonight using the UHC filter from Bader. And uh, let's get this thing going here. So I can turn off live view. Uh, the next step is to get PhD guiding going. I'm all plugged in on the mount here. I'm just going to connect it up and start looping exposures. Now the Starwave 50 millimeter telescope is uh, very rigid and uh, holds focus for months at a time. You can see some passing clouds going by there. It's, uh, it's not totally clear out here. So uh, now that we're looping one second exposures, I'm going to do auto star select and start running the caliber calibration process. Oh, there goes a satellite through the, the frame. The things you see when setting up. Yeah, so hopefully those clouds don't interfere, interfere with this calibration process. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and uh, set up our sequence of uh, images for the veil. So we're here in the plan editor and we're going to add a new light frame plan. And we'll call this Veil UHC RGB. The exposure length is going to be 3 minutes, 180 seconds. We're going to bin 2 by 2 pause 5 seconds between frames, and I'm going to set it to take 30. We're going to add new plan, and set it to OK. So this is queued up, ready to go once uh, PhD has done its thing and I, I had a feeling those clouds would be interfering. Uh, let's take a look at the graph. Looks like it's sorting itself out but yeah it's fighting through some bad seeing conditions. Whoa, looks a little wonky. I'm just gonna have a peek outside and see what it looks like. Yeah there's some thicker clouds going by that's really affecting this. I'm just going to stop the guiding for now and uh, once these pass by, we're going to get up and running. Well, there's still a lot of passing clouds right now, so uh, the guiding is going to be off, but I can at least start doing some test frames to see how much of the veil will show up in a three minute exposure. Um, so now that I've got the, uh, the sequence all queued up, I'm going to go ahead and start it. And we are guiding, and I do have the uh, dithering uh, enabled, so after each frame it will dither. So yeah, hoping to gather some good broadband color data on the veil tonight uh, to add some much needed natural star color and uh, to get that natural background sky, which should hopefully be much improved with this using this filter. Okay, well the first frame is done. And I certainly see the Veil Nebula and with that bright central star. Uh, it looks uh, well framed and uh, there is some passing clouds and uh, there's actually some big ones on the way. So I have a feeling I'm going to have to pause this session for about a half an hour as they pass through and then start it up again. But uh, this is the first frame of many. As you can see, we are on frame 2 of 30. We're at about 110 seconds now. 
So again, yeah, really excited for this final image and I uh, hope you stick around to see it. I take pictures of deep sky objects uh, with my camera and telescope here in the backyard. This is Rudy, the astro dog. Say hi, Rudy. Rudy, who's that? Who is that? <laughs> okay. <laughs>